The Russian and U.S. foreign ministers met yesterday to try and avert any further risk of Russia invading Ukraine. Sergei Lavrov and Antony Blinken are said to have had frank talks. Whilst the Russians insist they have no plans for a wider conflict, despite massing 100,000 troops on the border, America has warned there will be severe repercussions if the invasion goes ahead. Tom Tugendat is chairman of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee and has recently returned from Ukraine. And Tom joins us now. So, Tom, what's the sense on the ground about what might happen next? Well, morning, yes, morning, Philip. The reality is that in Kiev, things are bizarrely calm, actually. Uh, a lot of people are just going about their daily lives. They are quite used to having uh, Russia threatening them since 2014, when uh, Moscow ordered the invasion of some of the eastern part of the country and indeed the annexation of Crimea. So, you know, this isn't, in some ways, this isn't new for many Ukrainians. But we're also seeing uh, the ministers ordering the preparation for war of many of the uh, uh, army and indeed the reserves and indeed even some partisan style militias so this is this is clearly a moment of great tension for everybody and i think we're right to be concerned and to keep a very close eye on this tom we've sent weapons we've sent troops to ukraine I've, lots of people might say well, why are we getting involved in this what's it what's it got to do with what's it got to do with us well philip you and i both know that making sure that violence that intimidation doesn't succeed and that freedom prospers is absolutely fundamental to the interests of the British people. And it's not just about, you know, the fact that Putin is the first person to have changed the borders of Europe by force since 1945. It's also the reality that he's also expelled Ukrainians from their homes in the east. He's weaponized migrants through Belarus to try and destabilize Poland and Lithuania. And there's 44 million Ukrainians who could easily be forced into exile, not all of them, of course, but forced in, uh, into exile over the borders into the European Union. So this is really something that does concern us all. And frankly, the silence from the European Union is deafening and extremely concerning too. But would, we, would, we, I mean, would we really fight Russia if they were to invade Ukraine? Are we really going to fight Russia? And Because most people's assumption is that we wouldn't. And, and, and if we wouldn't, what's the point in sending troops and weapons if, if we wouldn't and the Russians know that we wouldn't? Well, we're not sending troops. We're only sending weapons. And the correct thing to do is to make sure we never have to fight Russia. And as you know, Philip, deterrence works much better than response. So making sure that the Ukrainians are capable of defending themselves, and that's what we've done by sending these NLAW, next generation light anti-tank weapons, and the Americans have sent a similar, uh, slightly more powerful weapon called the Javelin, and indeed Stinger missiles that can uh, take down aircraft will make uh, a huge difference, I hope, because I hope it will persuade Putin that this is a really daft idea, because whatever he manages to do in the initial punch, and he's got the armor, he's got the men to, 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 to invade, there's no question about that, but the occupation would be extremely difficult as the Ukrainians would fight for their, for, the, for their own country. So I hope very much what we're doing is we're dissuading Russia so that Putin doesn't make this daft decision. Well, this story is obviously in all the papers today about various discussions between the uh, ministers in Russia, uh, America, in the UK. Can you tell us any of the upshot of those meetings? Well, at the moment, those meetings are uh, pretty inconclusive. I mean, they've been somewhat better in the last 24 hours than they have been for a while before, in the sense that direct talks between the US Secretary of State Blinken and the Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov have really made a difference in making sure that uh, they both understand each other. And I hope this means that Mr. Lavrov will go back to uh, President Putin and make it absolutely clear that however easy the initial invasion is, the occupation will be difficult. And I hope the other thing that, we'll do, it, that it will do is it will focus the minds of many of our European partners, some of whom, frankly, have not been supporting uh, Ukrainian uh, freedom as much as they should have done, that this is a danger for all of us in Western Europe, uh, whether you're in, uh, you know, in Berlin or Paris, uh, this is a serious uh, crisis. You, you mentioned Berlin, Tom. Uh, there's talks that Germany is blocking Estonia from actually sending assistance to Ukraine. What, what, why are they taking that stance? Well, this is very concerning. And, and one, of the, one of the potential reasons is that uh, it's connected to Germany's and indeed other countries' dependence on Russian energy. As you know, Russian gas supplies keep homes warm in the winter across Europe. Uh, and so they are, let's face it, pretty dependent. But the reality is we can't find ourselves 
uh, being having our foreign policy, having our defence policy controlled by uh, dictatorships in the East. You know, we already know uh, that here in the UK, we've seen Putin uh, attempt to murder people in Salisbury, the Skripals, and successfully murder uh, Litvinenko in London. You know, we know what the price of Russian aggression is even here in Western Europe. And those in the East are all too aware. You'll remember the stories from this summer when I was over in Lithuania and I saw migrants being used, pushed across the border from Belarus into Lithuania, into Poland, because what they're trying to do is they're trying to destabilize the European Union and indeed uh, NATO. And that's a danger that they might try and do the same thing again. Tom Tugendat, Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, thank you for joining us this morning.